thousands have been killed in the war between Israel and Hamas, including at least 31 journalists. That's according to preliminary investigations by the Committee to Protect Journalists. The report also notes that eight other journalists have been injured and nine more are missing or detained. And just last week, the Israeli Defense Forces told Reuters and France's international news agency that it could not guarantee the safety of their journalists operating in the Gaza Strip. Journalists in conflict zones play a crucial role in shining a light on the realities of war, often at great personal risk. The importance of this dangerous work is recognized by the International Women's Media Foundation, or IWMF. Every year, the organization honors women journalists who brave incredible odds to report the truth with the Courage in Journalism Award. Joining us now are two recipients of this year's IWMF Courage in Journalism Award, photojournalist Yalda Ma'o-Airi, who is visiting a the U.S. from Iran for the first time, and Siobhan O'Grady, the chief Ukraine correspondent for The Washington Post. And also with us is Elisa Liz Munoz, the executive director of the International Women's Media Foundation. And I would be, uh, I, I have to mention Anne Finucane, who chairs the event, chaired the event, and um, we, the great Anne Finucane, of course, married to Mike as well. So, Sadly for we, Anne. we thank Anne for being a part of this. And Elisa, I'll start with you. This event, it seems, if it's, if it's possible, even more important uh, this year with everything that's going on. Tell us what you, what you plan to accomplish every year by shining a light on these women. This year is the 34th year that we have held the Courage in Journalism Awards. So you can imagine, for 34 years, women journalists have been risking it all to report the truth and to get us the news. And indeed, this year just seems especially heavy and difficult with all of the deaths that we're hearing about daily, Ukraine followed by Gaza and Israel. And we think it's just critically important to recognize that these journalists are out there every day to get us the most important stories of our day. And with them, we would have no information about what's going on. So we just think it's critically important to have the bravest journalists in the world recognized and honored for all that they risk and all of their sacrifices for us. And you've been in Ukraine, all over Ukraine. That's right. From the beginning of the, beginning of the war. Uh, talk, about, uh, talk about the importance of, of, of getting that story to the rest of the world. Absolutely. I think our team's uh, commitment to covering the story has not wavered since the full-scale invasion was launched in the early hours of February 24th, 2022. Even as attention may divert away from Ukraine at times, our team is constantly on the ground, always uh, both in Kyiv and on the front lines in the east and south. And we are completely committed to documenting especially the civilian toll of the conflict. Um, I was recently covering the horrific missile strike on a funeral that killed more more than 50 civilians in the village of Rosa in the Kharkiv region. And I spent a long time in the morgue after looking at the bodies to confirm, and I saw only one in military uniform. The rest were absolutely certainly civilians. Um, and documenting that kind of potential war crime is really our mission. We, um, we, we see the photos, the gripping photos, just the, the, the heartbreaking photos. Read the stories, but, but tell us, about the impact that you've seen, the, the, the human toll on Ukrainians that are enduring one strike on the civilian target after another strike and a half for over a year and a half. Absolutely, it never gets easier. And uh, just watching the resilience of Ukrainians is astounding, but they shouldn't have to be resilient just like anyone else in a war zone. They are rising to the occasion, but it's an occasion that no one should ever have to experience. and. It never gets easier to watch uh, a mother or father grieving over the body of their child or to see fellow journalists who've been killed on the front line trying to bring the truth, like Elisa mentioned. That's why it's so important that organizations like the IWMF continue to provide support, not only to someone like me, who's a staff journalist for a major newspaper, but also the freelance and local journalists who are risking their lives to bring us the truth. You know, Yelda, to Siobhan's point about risking your lives in order to bring people the story, and it's difficult 
incredibly difficult to maintain safety in a war zone, mm -hmm. female or male. But the critical component is access to the story. Could you talk about that? Um, you mean in the war zones or always, I mean... In your case, in just in general. Please. Yeah, because, you know, I'm always... I'm working in a country like Iran and the Middle East. And, you know, working as a journalist is always hard there because, you know, we are facing different kinds of problems. But as a woman, when you are a woman there, you know, you are facing uh, some other problems that uh, may stop you to work. Yes. Yeah, it's double. Well, mm -hmm. and let's point out what just recently you've been through because um, you received the 2023 Wallace Annenberg Justice for Women Journalism Award. And in September of 2022, Yalda was arrested by security agents of the Morality Police in downtown Tehran. You were covering the protests yeah. uh, surrounding the death of Masa Amini. You were put in prison in a detention facility and you sustained injuries. And so what drives you? Why do you still continue? Yeah. You know, I think I have to be the voice of my people. Um, I, I, I was trying to be in these 23 years that I've worked as a photojournalist, but, you know, I was mm, trying, I always trying to, I mean, be honest and show the truth. And I think it was the reason that they put me in jail because, yeah, I tried my best always to show the realities because, you know, the, the, the system wants to censor everything. Photojournalist uh, Yalda Muayeri, I think I'll try and get that right, the Washington Post chief Ukraine correspondent Siobhan O'Grady, and executive director of IWMF Elisa Liz Munoz. Thank you all very much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.